And that, my friends, is the good news that the Holy Spirit shared with the disciples on that first Pentecost. And it's the same good news that the Holy Spirit shares with us 2,000 years later today. The Holy Spirit is the Lord, the giver of life. And the Holy Spirit blows into our lives, into our churches, with one simple message. Live. Really, truly, wholly, enthusiastically, fully live. Dare to follow in the way of the one who shows us how to live, Jesus Christ. Love your neighbor. Care for the sick. Feed the hungry. Comfort the mourners. Visit the prisoners. Clothe the naked. Give water to the thirsty. Stand for justice. Pray for your enemy. Give with abandon. Care for immigrants. Pursue peace. Speak truth. Worship God. Love and serve him only. In short, all the Holy Spirit invites us to do is to make a reasonable attempt to be like Jesus, to live a life that's real, that's really living. All we have to do, I hear you saying, John, don't you understand how terrifying that is? Don't you understand how totally inadequate we feel? Well, yes, actually, I do understand that. And I suspect that those early Christians on that first Pentecost felt exactly the same way. Oh, it's so much easier, so much less trouble to be the walking dead, the zombie church, because then you don't really have to do much of anything at all, really. But that, my fellow Christ followers, is the blessing of Pentecost. Yes, Jesus knows that he is giving all who would follow him a big job, a lifelong adventure, a world-transforming mission. And yes, Jesus knows that this job can sometimes cause his followers, the church, to become overwhelmed, to be drained of life, to want to give it up and to stop the journey, to throw in the towel, to huddle up behind locked doors, to stop living and to start merely existing. Jesus knows that to become the living dead is a potentially attractive option. So Jesus sends the Holy Spirit from God on that first Pentecost to the zombie church. God breathes his life-giving presence on the church of the walking dead to give them life, to give them strength, to give them all the will and the wisdom that they and you and I need to do the job. The Holy Spirit beckons us to live life. This awesome, God-given life. This life that God intends for each of us right here and right now. Brothers and sisters, it's the presence of the Holy Spirit that makes it possible for you and me to know life in Christ and to share that good news with others. And just like it was on that first Pentecost, you and I aren't in control of what the Holy Spirit will do and when the Holy Spirit will will do it. Yes, we pray that the Holy Spirit will come and live in us. And God has promised to answer that prayer. Yes, we pray that the Spirit will fill us every day and transform our lives into the likeness of Jesus. But Jesus also warned us that the Holy Spirit is like wind. The wind blows where it chooses, and you and I hear the sound of it, but we do not know where it comes from nor where it goes. And that's what makes being filled with the Holy Spirit an adventure. It's not about designing a foolproof program to reach every home in our neighborhood with the good news of Jesus. Rather, it's about praying that the Holy Spirit will fill us and guide us each day to the people he's already working on. Praying that he will give us ears to listen to them and words to speak to them at the right time. It's a partnership with God. And anyone who's willing can join the partnership. So on this Pentecost, let's take Jesus up on his promise. Every morning, let's come to him in prayer. Lord, please give me the opportunities today to live for you. And also please fill me with your Holy Spirit so that I can recognize those opportunities and make the best use of them possible. But if we pray like that, you and I should watch out. God will indeed start sending people, start sending life our way. We'll discover to our surprise 
that the Holy Spirit is working through us to touch people's lives and bring them and us a step closer to Jesus. It's an adventure, this life with the Spirit. And like all good adventures, it's got a certain amount of scariness attached to it. You and I never know when the Holy Spirit's going to show up. We can be quietly going about our business, and then something happens, and we suddenly realize that we've encountered something or someone that is completely outside our control. It's like we're playing a game of pool, and we think that we know where our ball is going to end up, but then suddenly some invisible force raises the other side of the pool table, and suddenly we're dealing with a different set of circumstances. This is not about religion. Religion is about ceremonies and rituals that are predictable and safe. The Jewish people wanted a religion. We've heard today in the Old Testament that when they saw the awesome God at Sinai, they said to Moses, you go talk to him for us, and we'll do whatever you say. They set up a religious system to keep God at arm's length with Moses as their priest. Day, a lot of people try to do the very same thing. But Christianity isn't meant to be that sort of religion. It's meant to be a transformational encounter with Jesus by the power of his Holy Spirit. It's unpredictable. It's thrilling. It's scary and exhilarating. It's joyful and dangerous. For you and me to put our trust in the Lord, the giver of life, is to get on board a roller coaster ride. Where is it going to end up? I have no earthly idea. That's completely up to God. But don't worry. It's true that the Spirit is not a tame lion, nor is the Spirit safe. But the Holy Spirit is good. And you can trust the Spirit to guide you through this adventure with love and to bring you home at the last. And when all is said and done, we can be sure that you and I won't have dragged ourselves around mindlessly, meaninglessly on this earth like walking dead. But with the Spirit's presence and nurture and blessing, we will live life that is really living, a life that is stronger than death, a life that knows no end. And yes, even a life for a zombie church. Thanks be to God. Amen.